Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Throwback Thursday, and today we're going way back to 1981, and we're going to open up this box of 1981 Fleer. This came out when I was only two or three months old. It was Fleer's first modern release before this. Fleer had been around in the 60s. I think the last time they released a set was 1963, but 1981 was when um, Top started to get some competition from Fleer and Don Ross, and then later on in the decade... Uh, score came along in 88 and upper deck in 89. So this is Fleer's first um, foray into the uh, junk wax era, I guess you could say. So let's take a look at this box. This is a baseball card exchange authenticated box. And the box itself looks beautiful. Um, the corners on this box are perfect. And it actually is from a sealed case, which if you're going to buy an authenticated box and you want to pay a little bit of extra money just to have that peace of mind, if you can find an FASC box, that's uh, the best route to go. So this box was actually pulled from a sealed case and witnessed by the owner of the baseball card exchange, Mr. Steve Hart. And an interesting thing about this box is there are two free packs in here for Mr. Retailer, which means they get an extra 60 cents profit if they buy these flare boxes to sell at their store. So um, it advertises 36 on the box, but there's actually 38 packs in here. Uh, which is pretty cool. So that being said, the top cards we're looking for in 81, we're looking for some rookie cards here of Kirk Gibson, um, Harold Baines, of course, the newly uh, elected Hall of Famer there, um, Fernando Valenzuela, Danny Ainge, more famous for his NBA career, obviously, Jeff Reardon, and uh, we'll be looking for the big stars like Nolan Ryan, Ricky Henderson, and all of those guys. Uh, in terms of error cards, there's one error card that's semi-valuable. It's a Craig Nettles instead of Greg Nettles. We'll be keeping an eye out for that one. So we'll see what we find. Let's get this bad boy opened up. We do have some people that bought into this box break, and Darren C is going to get all of the cards from the top left. So we'll start out with Darren. Darren's got a channel called Comfort Cards. He opens a pack a day on there if you'd like to check him out. Let's see what kind of... Uh, cards you can get out of this so let's take a look at these oh, here we go there it goes take a look at these packs here there will should be two extra packs see these packs hidden in between um basically we'll just open those up at the end and divide them up amongst the people that bought these stacks but here are darren's cards bonus pack we'll just throw that aside over here Take a quick look at the wrapper here. It says Premier Edition, and these also came with bubble gum, which um, didn't last too long because Topps wasn't too happy about that. Took them to court, and um, basically Fleer had to change up their um, product and put stickers in. Um, Fleer put stickers in, and Don Ross put puzzle pieces in, starting in 82 for a good many years. 17 cards also, which is pretty nice. And here's the back of the pack. Looks like you get a baseball cap uh, for four bucks so let's go and see what we have in this uh stack of 81 fleer for darren there's whoa that gum looks very very white but let's see luckily it looks like it's not going to be making any stains which is nice all right we have mike phillips roland office from the expos phil necro hall of fame right there um bobby cox another hall of famer Steve Garvey, really solid player. J.R. Richard. And then we have a good old Red Sox baseball checklist. I used to hate checklists when I was a kid. I felt like it was a wasted card. Oh, you got a double checklist pack. That's a winner. Some people do like their checklist, but for me, when I was a kid, I hated checklists. Maybe you were the same. Maybe not. All right, next pack for Darren. Darren likes his Rockies, but the Rockies weren't around in 1981, obviously. They didn't come into play until 1993. So, Darren, I've been meaning to ask you, when the Rockies aren't in play, who are you looking for? Just the big hits, I guess? The uh, the good rookie cards? I don't know if there's a team that you followed before the Rockies. Steve Carlton, pitcher of the year there. Vita Blue, Joel Youngblood, and Ron Reed. By the way, this is what the back of the cards look like. Pretty cool. Um, one thing that you'll see that is an error, an uncorrected error on a lot of these cards, is the pitchers, it says major and minor league batting record, let's just say pitching record, but they did it for every pitcher, supposedly, so there's like Vita Blue, another pitcher says his batting record, Steve Carlton, it's his batting record, 
Um, they made that error on every card. So basically about half the set has an error um, on every pitching card. But doesn't really uh, add any extra value because if it's, un if it's an uncorrected error, that doesn't add anything at all to the card. So here we go. Manny Sanguian, who... I'm starting to get this uh, gum residue on my hands. Manny Sanguin, who owns the uh, Manny's Barbecue out in center field. George Foster, part of the Big Red Machine. Joe Morgan, Hall of Famer. Some of these are s slightly sticking together. Mike Tyson. Used to love Mike Tyson's punch out for NES back in the day. Different Mike Tyson, though, obviously. There's Bobby Bonds. That's Barry's father. Neil Allen. Next pack. By the way, there were 660 cards in the 81 Fleer set, and that was kind of the uh, standard for Fleer. I remember collecting Fleer in the late 80s and early 90s, and there was 660 cards. There's Jim Tracy, former Buckos manager. Ken Griffey Sr. Steve Howe, he had some substance abuse problems, unfortunately. Keith Hernandez. And Don Sutton. Always thought Don Sutton's hair was definitely a little interesting. Don Sutton, Hall of Famer. Next pack for Darren. The uh, most viable card in the set, if you're looking at PSA graded cards, that Harold Baines goes for around 100 bucks or so. Um, if you just go by ungraded cards, there's Joe Torrey. They list the Ricky Henderson in the Beckett Almanac is a $6 card. Of, of course, you can obviously find it usually for a lot cheaper than that. John Montefusco looks like he wasn't really ready for the picture. It looks like he's about mid-sentence there. But they just took it anyway. Bill Buckner, rest in peace, Bill Buckner. Looks like we got about four packs left for Darren. And then um, Darren, will get, you'll get the um, top several cards off of the uh, bonus pack. Fergie Jenkins. Hall of Famer, he's a good one. Dave Steeb, for some reason growing up, I didn't like Dave Steeb that much. I don't know why. This is a Dave Steeb second year card, but sometimes when you're a little kid, you just don't like different players for random reasons. Like he might have taken a bad picture on a card and you just don't like him because of it. There's a nice card. The 400 Home Run Club, Carl Yastrzemski, had a really nice solid career. Hall of Famer, Carl Yastrzemski. And our next pack. Ron Say is on the back from the Cubbies. Bobby Gritch. Jack Morris. We went out to as uh, Dwight Evans. He's a good one. Went out to a flea market today. Same place that we bought all those Jack Morris rookie cards last week. And um, they were advertising like a thousand dealers and everything. So we go there. It was Hartville. And um, this is a nice Mr. October or Mr. Baseball. Maybe he was called Mr. Baseball before being called Mr. October. I do not know. But yeah, we went out there and um, instead of a thousand dealers, there maybe was like, I don't, I don't know, 50. Really disappointing. Way less people there than last week. I still ended up buying a good bit of baseball stuff, but oh, I don't know. Almost um, did a 91 Bowman break tonight instead of 81 Fleer, but I've had this 81 Fleer from a sealed case box for a while. So I decided we should do it. There's a Dennis Eckersley not looking too happy there. Eckersley had a nice career. He's a Hall of Famer. He he did both, started and relieved. We got a lefty golden arm, Steve Carlton. So Fleer was really all about Steve Carlton. He had his own Pitcher of the Year card. Now he has a golden arm card. And the rest of that pack was mostly commons. Last pack for Darren C., See if we can find that Harold Baines or Fernando Valenzuela. Fernando Mania was in full swing in the early 80s. Got a Rod Carew on the back. That's a nice one. Good old Rod Carew. Tony Armas. Hey, we got the Ricky Henderson. Most stolen bases in the American League. This is his second year card. Card number 351. And um, this one is not his um, base card. This is like a special card. It has an additional card in there without that. Um, tagline there, but still pretty cool. Looking over my shoulder at the Becca Magazine, listed at $3. There's an Alan Trammell, shortstop, Hall of Famer there. Love Alan Trammell rookie cards. His rookie card, 78 tops, is always tough to find in clean condition. A lot of the ones that I see out and about have a little printing flaw 
with the ink. There's a Jim Rice, Hall of Famer. And a Don Zimmer, good old Don Zimmer. Rest in peace, Don Zimmer. And Rod Cruz. That last pack was actually really good for Darren. Congrats on a nice solid pack there. And we're going to give you a couple more cards, Darren, coming off those bonus packs. All right, let's do the top right now. Let's move the box back in view. We'll take uh, the top right for Jared. Jared had a nice night yesterday. He was in the uh, 2019 Bowman Mega Box break. Opened up 180 boxes. He had the Rays in one of those breaks. And actually ended up getting the Wander Franco Mojo autograph, which is pretty awesome. So let's see if Jared can pull a Harold Banzer or Fernando Valenzuela. And have some more good luck here. This first pack looks like um, Clint Hurdle might be your best player so far. Not a whole lot of good stuff coming out of there. There's Dennis Martinez. I was talking to my brother. I was like, how many more Dennis Martinez rookie cards do we need? Because like, we were, almost went back to that same booth that had all the quarter cards. But we were talking and we are like, we probably bought all the uh, good quarter cards last week. And we doubt that he probably restocked. Ended up buying just a bunch of top loaders from that guy today. All right, here's our next pack. Again, it looks like it's mostly commons. Common cards are usually worth, I don't know, five cents. Whenever I buy collections, I pay a lot less than five cents per card. I usually buy them for, if I can find them for this cheap, I'll get a thousand cards for about five bucks or something like that. So I, that's kind of how I compiled a lot of uh, my collections, just buying collections for cheap. There's a Tony Perez Hall of Famer. Sometimes there's some good cards mixed into those collections. It's mostly junk wax era stuff. Really nothing from the uh, 70s, unfortunately. Love the 70s era, 70s, 60s, and 50s, just because I wasn't alive then, so I don't have a lot of those cards. Growing up, it was always tough to find those cards because... Um, seems like they were always kind of at a premium. Earl Weaver, Lou Whitaker. It's another guy I like, Lou Whitaker, like his rookie card, 78 tops. There's the Danny Ainge rookie card. All right, Danny Ainge, Mr. NBA. Nice looking card there. I don't know much about Danny Ainge or the NBA, but I do know that this card is um, one of the best cards in the set. So we'll penny sleeve that one for Jared. I don't know if, Jared, you like the NBA or not. Really can't tell you much about Danny Ainge, but he played a couple years of baseball and then made the decision to uh, transition over to basketball. And I guess it ended up being a, a good call by Danny Ainge. One of the uh, rare basketball, baseball, two-sport athletes, Paul Mulder. We've had some football, baseball guys recently. You had Bo Jackson, Deion Sanders, Brian Jordan. Um, there's been a few. All right, here's our next pack. We've got Phil Garner, Gold Glove, Jim Rooker. I'm kind of mad there. Randy Jones. There's the Kirk Gibson rookie card. Okay, so um, Jared D's having some luck. Got the Danny Ainge, which we listed off as one of the best rookies in this set. And now a Kirk Gibson. Kirk Gibson, not a Hall of Famer, but very solid player during his career. Had a lot of clutch moments. Um, obviously his best moment ever was game one of the 88 World Series with that clutch home run off of Dennis Eckersley on two bad knees, basically. Kind of like hobbled around the bases. Kirk Gibson rookie card. Very, very nice. Congratulations on that one. Like that one a lot. We got Woody Fryman. Looks like he's actually a ball boy there. Maybe filling in for the ball boy on the sidelines. Jerry Royce. He's another guy that always looked like he was super old in all of his cards to me. Uh, Charlie Huff was one. Jerry Royce was the other one. Always looked like he was about 65 years old. All right, next pack for Jared. We've got Doug Rao at the top of the pack. Rick Russell, former Bucca there. There's the Jeff Reardon rookie card. He was um, one of the top closers in the game for a long time. Obviously ended up getting overshadowed by some other guys like uh, John Franco came along was a big deal for a couple years and Dennis Eckersley and eventually Mariano Rivera and Trevor Hoffman made Jeff Reardon be forgotten by some but not all but Jeff Reardon was definitely a solid reliever slash closer in the mid to late 80s 
All right, let's see. We still haven't found a John Wathen yet, which I was a little worried about that there's a nice Jim Palmer. I don't know if you saw the 81 Don Ross video that I did, but it was absolutely awful where every pack had basically three John Wathens in every pack. It was all, for some reason, all Royals and Yankees cards, and it was absolutely ridiculous. I could not believe that that, that, that happened to me. I almost didn't put the video, but I figured, you know what, I might as well. Gaylord Perry, it's, uh, it's become a classic, and people always tease me with John Wath and memes and stuff like that now because of it. Carl Yastrzemski. So we're having a lot better luck in this uh, 81 opening. George Brett, 390 batting average, which is crazy. A 390 batting average in 1980. Flirted with 400, but didn't quite get there. All right, next pack, we got Lloyd Mosby with some gum dust on him. Six to Lescano. Then we've got Tommy John, picked up his rookie card last week at the flea market. Willie Wilson, great leadoff hitter for the Royals. Ron Davis, Jerry Coos, and my brother picked up his uh, second year card today for a dollar. It was on the front of a grab bag. Eddie Murray, early Eddie Murray card, his rookie 78. Love that card. And Chet Lemon. Rounds out the rest of Jared's pack. So, you know what we'll do, Darren and Jared, since we do have these bonus packs, we'll um, we'll bust the one up in between both of you. And uh, we'll give Darren the top um, cards, and uh, we'll give Darren the top eight, and Jared the uh, bottom... Um, no, we'll give Darren the top nine, and Jared the bottom eight. We'll do it that way. So, one, two, three, four, five, six... Seven, eight, nine. These go to Darren C. Give you some extra cards. Looks like there was, wasn't anyone great in there. We'll give Jared the bottom ones. And um, that was pretty much a common pack. Jack Clark had a great career. Uh, Tom Hurd, a really solid career too. Part of that nice Cardinals team of the mid to late 80s there. Uh, nice. I think he usually batted second in their order, but overall great player. That was a nice top of the lineup there with uh, Vince Coleman, Tommy Hur. Willie McGee, Jack Clark. All right, next up, bottom left, Chris Wills is up. Put your whole name on there because we do have at least one other Chris W around that sometimes buys in the breaks. I don't want to confuse anybody. So here we go, Chris Wills. Let's see if you can find the Fernando Valenzuela. We shall find out. I already found the Gibson and the Danny Ainge. Also looking for Harold Baines. Let's see if we can find... Good old Harold. Next pack. Definitely not going to try the gum. Sometimes the gum looks appealing. I remember after doing the 82 tops break, I think it was 82 tops. The there's the Greg Nettles, that's the corrected version. The air says Craig with the C. After doing the 82 tops break, the next day I was down here just, I don't know, cleaning up or opening some more cards, and I actually Started eating a couple pieces of the 82 gum, just real small little bites of it. And it the gum was like pristine. I, I don't remember if that was from a sealed case or not, but it looked like the gum had just come out of a pack like yesterday. But I didn't get sick or anything, so I guess um, it was fine. Here is our next pack. Louis Tiant. Not a bad card there. Not much value to Louis Tion, but still great pitcher. Looks like they have different ads on the back of these. This one is for a giant three-inch photo button of your favorite star. I wonder if those are still around. I wonder if they have different offers on all these. I wasn't really paying much attention. They have the hat offer on the first pack I looked at. There's Mark the Bird Fidrich. Rest in peace. Lance Parrish. Carlton Fisk, that's a good one, Carlton Fisk. Enrique Romo, looks like he forgot his hat. Richie Zisk, part of the uh, Buccos there for a while in the 70s. Triple Threat, this card actually um, is the most valuable card listed on recently sold listings. But that's just because I think the one that I was looking at does not have a number on it. It's a PSA 10 going for like 200 bucks, but it's without a number on the back, so... This one does have a number on the back. Still a cool card, though. Triple threat. That's the uh, 1980 World Series champions right there. Schmidt, Rose, and Boa. The Phillies would win the 80 World Series and be commemorated on some 
special cards in 1981. The Phillies actually start off the 81 Fleer set. Back in the day, Fleer used to arrange all of their cards by teams. So like cards number like 1 through 25 or whatever would be a certain team. And they uh, chose the Phillies to lead off their set to honor them as the World Series champions, which is pretty cool. I always liked how Fleer would do that. Would make sorting them out a little easier, I guess. Sometimes you could even just sort them by looking at them. I used to always sort the cards whenever I was just a kid. I would sort them in stacks of hundreds. Like I would have like a like a zero row I'd call, then a 100 row where I'd put all the 100s, like the five would go over the 500 pile. And then I'd resort them again by tens. And then from tens, I'd take it down and do it by single digits. It used to take forever. But it was fun to put together sets. I'm sure some of you guys put together sets as kids. Definitely uh, a cool part of being a collector during this time. Trying to put sets together and then making a little checklist of the cards you need. And looking out for those cards and then getting super pumped when you get like a Dave Bergman. Like who the heck wants Dave Bergman? Well, if you're collecting a set, you'd be really pumped if you needed that card. That was always a cool thing about collecting. Kind of miss doing that. Tom Seaver, Tim McCarver, two great players there. One's a Hall of Famer. One, um, I don't think Tim McCarver's a Hall of Famer for broadcasting, is he? He's definitely not for a player. But he was a great broadcaster, for sure. I like listening to Tim McCarver. All right, here's our next pack. Cesar Cedeno's on the front. Burt Blylevin, Hall of Famer there in his Buccos uniform. Hey, we got the Fernando Valenzuela rookie card, and this is another uncorrected error. It says Fernand Valenzuela. They forgot the O on all of the cards. I don't know if it was just uh, a character issue where they could not fit that O on there, so they just decided to shorten it, kind of like how Topps used to put Bob Clemente instead of Roberto Clemente. But Fernando Valenzuela for Chris W., congratulations on that one. We'll get that one in a sleeve for you, and uh, check out the back. Fernando Valenzuela, Fernando Mania going on... Um, all throughout the country, you can see he came up and had a zero and run average in 1980 and just continued to impress for the first few years of his career. So ended up pitching um, at least a decade or so. Dave Winfield, Hall of Famer. Johnny Bench, another Hall of Famer. So this is ending up to be a pretty good pack. And here's your last pack, Chris. See what we can pull out of here. We got everyone that we basically wanted except for out of that rookie list. Harold Baines is the only one we're, we're missing. We got Reardon, Gibson, Valenzuela, Ainge. Come on, Harold. Where are you? It's not bad for getting all of them in one box. I always feel... Hey, Bob Walk. Bob Walk, former Bucko and uh, actually current... Is this his rookie card? That might be a Bob Walk rookie card. My friend Joe from Joe's Card Crowd will be going crazy right now. It's actually his uh, avatar, a picture of Bob Walk's face. I think that's a Bob Walk rookie card. Art Howe from Moneyball and Ed Ott. So that's Chris W's stack. Well, Chris, you do have some more cards coming from that bonus pack, so you might get something else. Fingers crossed. And our last stack goes to Jonathan H. Jonathan H has a great YouTube channel with over 300 subs. Just watching him today for a little while, while I was breaking, or not breaking, but sorting out the cards from the Stadium Club break. I was working on getting that break F all done he was opening some 91 upper deck mentioned me uh, at least once or twice says you don't i don't know how you look at the cards through the camera well here's the secret jonathan i'm actually not looking at them through the camera right now i actually have my face off to the side of it because I, it is disorienting to try to like look at the cards on the camera willie stargell hall of famer so i just um i kind of like Look back and forth and make sure that I have them on the screen, like framed well in the picture. There's an Andre Dawson, another Hall of Famer, like Andre Dawson a lot. Always like looking for his rookie cards, 77 tops. Hope you can find some of those out at the National. I think I only have one of those somewhere. Get this dust off your next pack. Wally Backman. People like Wally Backman just because of his tirades. Al Holland. Looking very 70-ish there. Bruce Suter holding a bat. Hall of Famer. Concepcion. Phil Necro. Looks like he's like, what? Mid-sentence there. 
All right, come on, Harold. Where are you? Harold Baines might come down to the last pack. It's always fun when it's the last pack to get the Carter you're looking for. George Brett with some gum dust on him. MVP George Brett. Yep, George Brett hit 390. You better be the MVP if you hit 390. Hal McRae. Ozzie Smith. Good old Ozzie Smith. I heard you saying you're looking for Ozzie Smith for your PC, so that'll be a nice one. Ozzie Smith. Jonathan H. I uh, was talking about Nolan Ryan, Ozzie Smith. Hey, we got a no number on the back. What's that? Oh, no, never mind. Got excited there for a second. It's not a no number. It's um, ML average, and it's just not, I guess, not there just because Tony LaRusse is a manager, so... Oh, man, I thought we had a no number on the back because I know there is that one card number 645 that doesn't have a number, the Phillies card. All right, let's see what we got here. Frank White. Uh, Gary Gray, Tippy Martinez, and Tony La Russa as a manager also played in the majors for a while. I think his rookie card's, what, 63 tops? Picked that one up recently for $7.50. It was in nice condition. Good old Bo Diaz on the back. Another guy that passed too soon, tragically. Willie Randolph. Saw a few of his rookie cards out at the flea market last week. Picked a few of those up. All right, let's see who else we have for Jonathan. Let's see if we can find that help. Hey, there he is. Good old John Wathen. Would not be a break from the 80s without this guy. Again, John Wathen. It's kind of a meme around here just because of the 81 Don Russ break. Kind of put his name on the map. So I kind of perk up whenever I see his stuff and people send me John Wathen cards every now and then for fan mail. Probably have uh, more John Wathen autographs than any other player, believe it or not. Probably have at least a half dozen of those. Hey, Pete Rose. That is actually the card featured on the front of the box. Pete Rose played with the Phillies for a little while, mostly with the Reds. He played for the Reds for a long time, then went to the Phillies for a few years. Then he would go to the Expos for a short amount of time before ending up back with the Reds. And he was honored with the number one card in the set there. Pete Rose, the all-time hit king. Unfortunately, he'll probably not get into the Hall of Fame during his lifetime, just because uh, after his career, he, if you don't know, he bet on baseball as the manager of the Reds, and A. Bartlett Giamatti, the commissioner, banned him for life, gave him a lifetime ban, which means um, no Hall of Fame for Pete Rose, ineligible for the Hall of Fame. Maybe one day he'll be allowed back in. He's in the Reds Hall of Fame. Basically, he's all over Great American Ballpark. There's little nods to Pete Rose all over the place. Goose Gossage in there. I really like the the uh, baseball wall. They have a, a wall there. It's like a three-story wall with like 4,256 baseballs, one representing uh, a hit, like every hit in um, Pete Rose's career. It's actually a pretty cool sight. All right, let's see here. Next pack. Dale Murphy, a lot of people like Dale Murphy. Bruce Bochy. Doesn't have much uh, much time left managing. I believe he's going to be retiring very soon. But Bruce Bochy, probably a Hall of Famer for a manager. I mean, he did win three World Series in 2010, 2012, and 2014. So I think uh, Bruce Bochy is going to be a Hall of Famer. Take a seat there right alongside Tony La Russa, Bobby Cox, Joe Torre. Most hits in the NL, Steve Garvey. Brenny Stennett once went 7-for-7 seven seven in a the game. There's Nolan Ryan. Okay, Nolan Ryan for Jonathan H. Very nice. That works out well. That's uh, his PC. Personally collects Nolan Ryan cards. And Dennis Littlejohn. So we have that Mr. Retailer bonus pack in there. Like this, the box said, there was a bonus pack for um, extra profit. You can sell those and get 60 extra cents per box. All right, we'll give, I um, guess we'll give the top, um, what were we doing, top nine for the first person, bottom eight for the next. I'll just continue with that. Unfortunately, there's not an even number. All right, top nine, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. These all go to Chris W. And check this out. Jonathan H., you get the bottom H, and you got the Harold Baines in the bonus pack. Harold Baines rookie card and a Ricky Henderson. Very, very nice. How about that? 
That worked out well, Jonathan H. Harold Baines and Ricky Henderson regular card. We got to get the Harold Baines sleeved up. So that actually ended up being a great box. Very well balanced. Not a whole lot of repeats and doubles or triples. Maybe a couple here and there, but we got one of all the major hits in the set. Harold Baines, Valenzuela, Reardon, Ainge, um, and so on and so forth. So Kirk Gibson, very, very nice. And I um, always like seeing these Hall of Famers. Ricky Henderson, Lamar Johnson, obviously not a Hall of Famer. Sparky Anderson, another Hall of Famer, and Jerry Turner. So those that those are going to Jonathan H. Overall, I think that was a pretty nice throwback Thursday going way back to 1981. And the box is in beautiful condition um, from a sealed case, sharp corners. I'm kind of compiling a lot of these boxes. They make nice display items, I guess. Um, I saw somebody selling this empty box out of the uh, flea market or antique mall for like 15 bucks. Faked me out, thought it was a sealed box, which uh, obviously boxes from a sealed case, these go for once again around like $100 after all said and done, a little over $100. So thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please take a minute and hit the subscribe button if you would. Like the video and leave a comment. And we got Fan Mail Friday tomorrow, and then we're doing a uh, giveaway on Saturday where we will be giving away some All-Star Game tickets or Home Run Derby tickets, your choice, um, for next week. Uh, out in Cleveland. So thanks again, everyone, for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you had a great 4th of July, and I'll see you all tomorrow.